ago, Russia completed the withdrawal of its forces from East Germany. At the time, Moscow hoped a new inclusive system would provide for both its own and Europe's security. But so far, little has been done to make that ambition a reality. Back in the 1970s, Viktor served in the Soviet Army's rocket forces. He was sent to eastern Germany to join the USSR's huge military contingent. Almost two decades on, he still enjoys watching his home video of that time. The retired soldier recalls his decade in Europe as the best time of his life, though admits it was not a walk in the park. Yes, we were earning more money than an any military base in the Soviet Union. We could travel and see Germany, and at the same time we had a 12-hour working day, and the general approach to our work was so serious that we were supposed to be in full military readiness within 30 minutes, should something happen. The Soviet Union's primary line of defense in Europe. This is how the 500,000-strong contingent in eastern Germany could have been best described. Following the country's post-war division, Soviet troops occupied the eastern part of Germany, while Allied forces were stationed in the west. The previous security system in Europe proved ineffective, and in order to create one, Soviet authorities, including Gorbachev, offered on several occasions the creation of a united system of security in Europe. Everyone understood the need for it, but nothing was done. When the Cold War began, it was in Berlin where the confrontation between the superpowers was most visibly seen. At times, the two blocs' armies stood at gunpoint over the Berlin Wall. But as the perestroika winds of change started to blow in Moscow, the wall fell in 1989. With its demise came an agreement signed by Mikhail Gorbachev and Helmut Kohl for the USSR to voluntarily end its military presence. It was left to his successor Yeltsin to celebrate the final withdrawal five years later. Half a million Soviet soldiers came home in the biggest ground military move in post-war history. And there were so many of them that Western Germany's government even financed the construction of housing back in Russia. Many historians believe that the Soviet forces pulled out from eastern Germany was inevitable and that for the Kremlin in the times of perestroika it was regarded as a necessary concession. However, Moscow expected something in return from the West, which up to this day it believes it has never received. The Soviet embassy in Berlin's minister council at the time speaks of a certain unwritten agreement made by the Cold War leaders. Gorbachev promised to withdraw the Russian forces only in the case that NATO would not expand to the east. But this promise was broken. The Soviet foreign ministry insisted that all forces must pull out of Germany, including the NATO forces. It would have been logical, but this didn't happen. Gorbachev had a soft policy and didn't demand anything. If only they'd put the NATO non-expansion condition on paper, then many modern-day tensions could have been avoided. Fifteen years on since the historic pullout, which some say brought a massive blow to Russia's own security in Europe, President Medvedev has again raised the idea that never worked for Gorbachev, to build a collective security system for the entire continent. The OSCE approved of the initiative. However, on a practical level, those in charge of politics in the European Union still seem to be thinking it over. Alexei Roshevsky, RT, Moscow.